Uh, good evening, uh, afternoon. How are you guys doing? Mic's not on. Hey, hey, hey! How's this? Super exciting. Well, um, hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's lovely to be talking to you guys. Uh, my name is Buck. I'm an engineer at Triplebyte, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a project I've been working on for uh, the last on and off for the last couple of years. I've wanted it for quite a long time. Uh, so a search engine for data structures. Um, so a data structure is a way of organizing data to efficiently support a particular API, right? So given that, a data structure search engine is just a, something that can take such an API and return an efficient implementation uh, for it, no, no matter what it is. Uh, so my goal here has been to make something which can search through uh, potential data structure implementations, and I want it to be extremely usable and extremely powerful. So I want it to be usable enough that you can basically cheat on phone screens in job interviews by, instead of answering data structure questions yourself, uh, just using it to tell you the correct answer. But I also want it to be powerful enough that even uh, tricky companies like Twitter, which like asking you tricky questions, uh, I want it to be powerful enough that it can express all the facts that you would need to know to answer all of those questions. Uh, so let's look at some of the questions uh, that I would like us to be able to answer. So here's a classic one from a Cracking the Coding interview. Um, how would you design a stack which, in addition to push and pop, also has a function min, which returns the minimum element? Um, so you, know, you see we have these three methods, push, pop, and min, which we, all need, which we need to implement uh, all efficiently. Um, another one from Quora, there's, there's dozens of these on Quora, or, or more dozens until I get tired of looking at them. Uh, you know, I want to support find min, find max, delete min, delete max, insert, and delete. Uh, a less carefully written one on Quora, you know, can I delete an element from the middle of an array using Q in data structures, which I'm going to optimistically interpret to mean uh, how can I implement a Q in such a way that deletion in the middle is fast. So these questions all have a very similar form. Uh, so our input is a set of methods that we want to be able to implement correct, uh, quickly, and our output is a set of composite data structures, which end up being able to uh, implement them quickly. Um, and so the software I've written for this is at ds.slegeris.com. I might change that URL at some point in the future, but for the moment, I like an excuse to force people to learn how to spell my last name, so it's going to stay like that for at least a little bit. So let's, let's look at some answers. Um, so we want to find, uh, in addition to push and pop, we have min. Let's have a look. Um, so I want to have, for push, I'm going to have insert last. Uh, for pop, I'm going to have delete last and get last, and min, get minimum. I have to have slightly longer, uh, slightly longer names so that there's less ambiguity, even if there's a lot of implementations, which, as you can see, there are. Um, so I can see that what I have is an array list, which is implementing the main stack part, and a stack reduction memoizer, which is the data structure which, uh, as you guys might have heard of this data structure before, right? If you want to memoize any reduction of a function over a stack, uh, you can do it by just having another stack of the reductions. And then whenever you push, you um, compute it according to how it works at the end. And then when you pop, you just pop an element off the stack. So that works if you want to take the minimum of the stack or the MD5 hash of the stack or literally any operation you could possibly want. Um, and so what my system knows about this is that for uh, any reduction, I can do it in constant time. And I support insert last, uh, so insert at the end and delete at the end. Uh, so that's 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 like the idea of what we're building here. Uh, let's look at the next one. Um, we want find min, find max, delete min, delete max, insert and delete. Let's have a look. Um, okay, looks like the fastest way of doing it is a value ordered order statistic tree. Um, how many of you guys have heard of order statistic trees? Many, no one. Oh man, uh, you, pr you probably have, you just don't know the name. Uh, a value ordered statistic, order, so an order statistic tree is just a variation on a binary search tree where every node has a count of how many uh, nodes it has, right? Which means you can uh, iterate over it quickly. Um, anyway, so it turns out that if you have a order statistic tree which is storing an array, but instead of storing things in order, stores them in the order of their values, you can implement all of these things uh, with these times. Um, and for the last one of these, we wanted to have a queue which uh, supports delete at index quickly. And we'll see that we have two op options, an or statistic tree list and a tiered vector. Um, so a tiered vector is a data structure from a, a paper, when is it? Um, a, a while ago now. It's, it's not actually that cool. It's mostly a, a trick. Um, 
but it does legitimately give you constant get by index and, uh, and uh, square root time delete by index. So anyway, so the idea is there are a whole lot of data structures here. Like I certainly had not heard of all of these data structures when I started building this thing. Uh, and the problem with data structures is normally people don't explain very clearly uh, precisely what problems they solve. And a lot of the time, you don't care about reading a very long list of all data structures. You just want to find the data structure which works for your particular problem. So let's talk about how we might make this. Um, so how do we choose data structures? So here's the first idea. Let's consider all of the data structures that are possible and then choose the fastest one. Um, so this sounds like it's not going to be that hard. Um, let's just say like a data structure is a map from methods like insert at end or uh, get first to uh, a, bit, a, a time in bigger. Um, so this is the idea that you get if you looked at biggercheatsheet.com, which just has a very, very long list of data structures and how fast they are to do various things. But from looking at this, you'll see the kind of problems that come up, and you'll see that this is fundamentally the wrong way to approach the problem. Uh, so, so let's see. So for instance, uh, insertion in a singly linked list takes constant time. Well, that's sort of true, I guess. But they haven't mentioned that insertion in a singly linked list actually, like, to insert by index, you also have to find the thing, which takes linear time. And it kind of makes sense that they expressed it this way, because it's a lot more natural to talk about inserting after a given node in a linked list. And it's a lot more natural to talk about searching by a particular position in an array. And so we try to make this table expressing in the same, uh, the same methods what all the different data structures can do, even though I think that's like, fundamentally the wrong way to approach the problem. So let's, um, let's, try, let's try coming up with some fast implementations for some, uh, some combinations of methods. All right, so we want get by index and update by index. Who can tell me a good data structure for this, this set of methods? Cool, yes, an array is going to give me someone who's a functional programmer and they set a tree. They are, of course, correct, but let's go fast. <laughs> uh, so get by index and update index both going to take constant time in an array, right? Everyone agree? Thumbs up? Yeah, cool. Um, what about if I want to have insert at end? What's a good data structure now? Yeah, still an array. Uh, so, so in particular, a, uh, like a Java-style array list or a dynamic array, as you'd call it in. I don't actually know on Wikipedia you'd call it that. Um, so this, incidentally, I'm just going to call these three, uh, three methods uh, stack, right? So stack just means like th that combination of three methods we need to support. What about if I want to just support the method insert last? Who has a good data structure for that? So this is the only method I need to support. Does anyone have any ideas? You said list. I have an easier idea, which is unit. Uh, so unit is just the type with one element in it. Uh, it's just an empty tuple. And this totally perfectly supports all of these methods. You say you want to insert last. I'm like, sure, I did that. That definitely happened. There's no, like, I am going to answer every query totally correctly about each of these. So the moral of the story here is um, you don't actually have to support every uh, plausible method. Uh, you just need to support the ones that were required by the API. So it's totally fine if you don't actually know everything about uh, your input. Um, so let's talk about memoization a little bit. So memoization is the idea where instead of computing the result of a read method every time you need it, you store it on the writes in such a way that it's easy to access. Um, so how about if we want to support uh, insert last and get sum? So I need to support two methods. You put a thing into the list, and you get the sum of the, the list. What's a good data structure for that? Int, yes. So I just like have a single int somewhere, which is maintaining the sum. Um, what about, um, yeah, so memoize sum. What about if I want to store, uh, I want to have insert last and also get minimum? What's a good data structure for that? Awesome, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So an int is going to work totally fine for this. At this point, you might do the totally incorrect thing of saying, well, I guess there isn't really a difference between these two situations. If I need to support insert last and a reduction, it doesn't really matter what the reduction is, because I can just store it in a single int, and I'm basically done. Uh, and as we'll see, that doesn't actually quite work. So what about if I want to have a stack but also has get sum? What can I do? So, so it supports all the methods on a stack, as well as supporting get sum. Who has any ideas? Yeah, so we want a dynamic array and a memoized sum. So the idea is um, we're just going to be doing both of the things in, in, in both. And we're going to be using the faster read uh, method. Well, uh, yeah, so like each one provides naturally one of the read methods. And we're going to use uh, the, the memoized sum for get sum. And we're going to use the uh, dynamic array for the other read methods. OK, how about if we want to have a stack? 
uh, which I guess I didn't edit out, and also get min. Can we do the same thing? Can we combine the memoizer for min with a stack? No, we can't. It just doesn't work because when you try to pop things off the end of the stack, you'll realize that there's no way of inverting the min operation. So even though it, when we just had inserted end and get sum and inserted end and get min, it looked like memoizing these things behaved exactly the same, but it doesn't. So you'd have to use something like a heap or a binary search tree. Uh, memoize min doesn't work. Um, so the moral of the story is data structures are more complicated than just a table of things which you can look up and combine. So for instance, uh, you know, they can support only a subset of all methods and they can rely on other structures to work. So a better idea than uh, considering all the different data structures separately is to consider all possible combinations of data structures and choose the fastest. There are a number of obvious problems with this, such as the fact that all possible combinations sure looks like exponential time to me. Uh, which it indeed is going to take. But let's just deal with the fact that it's probably going to take exponential time for now and talk about how we're going to do it. So the question is, how can we represent all of our knowledge about data structures so that we can reason about their behavior when combined, right? Let's talk about how to do it. Um, so a data structure is going to be a collection of what I'm going to call method implementations. Um, let's look at one. Here's the linked list. A linked list has get first, which takes constant time, and get next, which takes constant time. Does anyone disagree? Fantastic. Um, we can also have implementations which do not live inside a data structure and are simply true facts about the relationships between implementations. Uh, so for instance, get by index can come from get first plus n times get next. Does that make sense to everyone? So this is a very natural way of expressing how you implement get by index in a linked list. Um, it also makes sense to have this uh, method implementation around. Uh, so get first comes from get by index. And the reason is, when I'm describing what an array list does, it's a lot more elegant to just say that get by index takes constant time and not have to explicitly say that get first also takes constant time. Like get first takes constant time because you just passed zero into get by index. Uh, similarly, get next uh, can be implemented by get by index. So what are the things we're getting, by the way? This is, I'm just going to very quickly say this. but. Uh, Whenever I say get, the thing that we're getting is like an abstract idea of everything we could possibly want to know about that position in our list. Um, so that includes its index and its value. Let's just, I'm only saying this so that no one yells at me about it later because I wasn't very precise. Uh, if you just like kind of treat it intuitively, it kind of works. Okay, so let's, uh, an array list, um, here's like a more complete implementation of what an array list gives you. It has get by index, it has update node, which is the method which given a node, which we got by its index probably, uh, we can change its value. Um, and we have delete last and insert last at the end. Does that make sense? OK. Um, so now let's look about how we might want to combine these. OK, so we have an array list on the left, uh, which has these, these methods, get by index, update node, delete last, and insert last. And we have a sum memoizer. So let's look at how these four methods are implemented. So remember that the sum memoizer is just an int, right, that we're storing somewhere. So you can get the sum, you just return the int. Does that make sense? You can insert at a particular index. So insert at index is the method that takes an index and a value and uh, uh, inserts the item at that index. Can anyone guess the implementation of insert at index? Uh, you, you add it to the int, right? Yeah, plus. Plus is the implementation. Um, you can also, given a particular node, you can also change the value of that node. So update node is the one that assumes we already have a copy of the value and changes it. So if we already know that the value of a particular position is 5, then update node means uh, you know, we're going to be able to subtract 5 from our int and then add 7 to it or whatever if we want to change the value from a 5 to a 7. And if we want to delete a node that we already know the value of, we can turn that, um, we can just subtract that. Uh, and we have a few relationships between these that are useful. So for instance, we know that we can do get last with get by index. We know that we can do delete last with delete node and get last. Um, and we can do insert last with insert by index. Um, yeah, so let's talk about how we would get the method times. Um, given all these, we have to figure out a way to start out with some like base cases like these and some inductive cases like these, I guess, and get the fastest implementations for everything. Uh, and we want to use a graph search. Um, and here is a lie of an implementation. It's basically Dijkstra's algorithm, um, except for the fact that we're on a 
a multigraph instead of a graph. This isn't actually quite a correct implementation, but I invite you to look at my actual code. But the basic idea is um, you figure out the fastest way that you could poss possibly uh, you have like a queue of data structure implementations that are potentially the fastest, and you pop them off one at a time uh, and then add them to like a result, which is the, the fastest implementations for every method. Um, so here's an interesting thing. When we have multiple data structures and we're combining them together, if there's two different ways of getting the read method, you take the faster one, right? Because when you're doing a read, you only have to read from one of them. But when you're doing a write, you have to write to both of them. And that's like a fundamental, really important difference between read methods and write methods. Um, and so that means that we have our overall method, which looks uh, like this. We want to get all the times for a set of data structures. So we get all of our read times by taking the union of all of the read implementations of the data structures we've chosen and adding in all the default read implementations um, and uh, calling get whole times on it, which I guess I didn't write. This isn't real code. Uh, and then separately for all of our data structures, seeing how fast, oh man, I really did not proofread this. Um, you take all the times from the read methods, and for each data structure, you put all the read methods in with the write methods. Um, and then we add it all together, search for all those times, combine all of the write times together, and return that, and we are done. In real life, actually, it's much more complicated than that because of stuff like this. Um, if I can compute a range query in constant time if f is item potent and I want to use this, I have to pass along all of my conditions all of the time. Uh, and so it has to like, be able to maintain that kind of thing. OK, um, I'm out of time, almost. Future work, most important one, I need a better name. ds.slagrus.com is not good enough. Uh, and I want to add a bunch of other things as well. Uh, I invite you to cheat on uh, questions in job interviews with this as much as you can. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a good time. Do I have half a minute for questions or none? Hey. Uh, yay. What's up? So, yeah, so the question is, did I think about using a logic programming framework? Uh, the answer is I did. I didn't know how to use one. This seemed like more fun. And additionally, the logic programming frameworks I've looked at aren't, obviously they'll tell you whether something's possible, but they didn't seem to very naturally express like its cost. So like a more complicated lo logic framework where, where, like, where like, like, you know, what I, this is just like theorem proven, right? From like a set of, a set of propositions and a set of uh, like, things. Um, but I, didn't, I, I would need to use a logic which had costs associated with theorems, and I wasn't sure of a nice way to do that. Additionally, there's a lot of complexity associated with the fact that there's actually multiple ways of doing everything with different costs, and you have to maintain like a dominance frontier of all the different ways at once. Anyone else? Just last question, please. How do you handle the situation where you, you have to start designing something before you know exactly what you needed to do, and to give yourself flexibility for implementing new things? Uh, in, 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 in real life or in the, the design of this project? Uh, I'm thinking about real life. In real life, uh, you give up because that's too hard and do things that seem pretty reasonable <laughs> and then uh, optimize when you find your bottlenecks. Thank you very much. Have a good day.